So, no, you didn't read the description incorrectly. It really is a 1600 watt power supply review, a brand new unit from Corsair with some really technological advancements going on inside. Now, I know you're all shouting at the screen, why do we need 1600 watts? Power's coming down, but you've got miners. They might want um, power supplies with a lot more power. With um, Threadripper and the Vega 64, power requirements have kind of started to eke their way, not necessarily up again, but we have got stuff being sold on the market at the moment that can get near to that if there is enough of it. And also, you still get those hardcore overclockers and enthusiasts that just want the absolute best, cleanest power supply on the market that is available. So is it that? So I said in the description about some technological advancements. Now essentially what they've done is they've switched from silicon to gallium nitride for the transistors used in the power supply. And what that has meant that they can do is they can put increase the efficiency, which in the direct impact of inc uh, increasing efficiency is that um, uh, reduces heat, and they can also make the unit smaller as well. So even though the power supply, as you'll see in a minute, is 20 millimeters smaller than the old AX1500i, they've actually then still been able to um, make it 20 millimeters smaller. So smaller, 100 watts more, you know, it, there's lots of little things in here that are going on. And it, it, essentially it's, they're saying actually less capacitance and 40% 40 40 more power density than silicon um, counterparts for the gallium nitride stuff. This, um, it also has 100% Japanese 105 degrees capacitors, a 10 year warranty. It's still got Corsair Link and you can set up all of the connections on the in the link software and you can set your own overcurrent points as well so they're mo mostly set to like 40 amps but you can reduce them right back down if you want so there's loads that you can do in the software and all that sort of stuff most of us I have to admit don't really touch all of that kind of thing but I have a Sun Moon power supply tester now my Sun Moon without an extra add-on unit which costs thousands can only really safely go up to about 1200 watts. Now I have uh, reviewed 1500 watts, 1600 watt power supplies in the past and I always go up to that 60, I always go up to that 1200 watt limit, which is what I'm going to be doing today. And that's, it still means that all of the big power supplies get treated kind of fairly. But I just wanted to be open and honest, that's as far as I can go. The 20% um, the and 50% is always kind of of the rated unit anyway. So 50% will be uh, 800 watts, 20% will be 320 watts. So we've got plenty that we can do and get on with, with the sun, moon, and I've got an oscilloscope so we can see the ripple and all of that stuff as well. So if you're interested in getting really kind of, well, technical to my level of ability, then go and get your tea and biscuits. So we're going to skip to straight to what's in the box because I did a box opening bit of the video and then I realised I hadn't turned my microphone on. So this is the, the, the main part of what come in the box itself. Obviously we want to have a good look at the power supply. So you've got the logo there, but there's also another one on the top. So if you favour the fan down design, then you get a nice embellishment on the top. Kind of stands out. I think it's quite cool actually. And then the, the kind of black and grey design on the side. Round on this side, you've got the connections for all of your PCI Express and your 8-pin CPUs. Six over here for your peripherals and SATAs. 24-pin goes up top. Self-test here for the link and so that you can make sure that the fan spins because a lot of people panic. But obviously, um, when it's not um, hot or got a much load on it, the fan won't spin at all. Um, we've got the Corsair Link uh, part up here. Now, if you go for the fan up side of things, you are kind of greeted with a rather ugly sticker on this side. I think there's some legal side of it that they have to have that on them somewhere. But they come with these, or it comes with these amazing, because oh, I love them, uh, magnets that you can put over the side. You can obviously put it on the other side as well. It doesn't matter which side you want to put it. But there's um, white 
red and blue, which is all nice. It does come with a uh, four Velcro cable tidy, um, yeah, Velcro cable tidy tabs, and that will come in handy for the massive amount of cables that it does come with. Now, obviously you don't need to use all of them, and the whole part about it being fully modular is use the ones that you need, but the cables come in this lovely bag. Um, and it's, it's almost like a toolkit kind of feel to it. And then they all get rolled out like that. So, looking on the box, what I can tell you is you get two eight pin EPS cables, you get six PCI Express cables that are individual PCI Express cables. So they've only got um, uh, a six plus two on each end. So you get six of those. Then you get two cables that are daisy chained. So um, you get two six plus twos on each one. Um, then you've got uh, you've got two SATA cables with two connectors on, you've got three SATA cables with four connectors on, you've got three K, uh, Molex cables with three Molex con connectors on, and you get a couple of floppy adapters as well, which are at the end. And People always say, why do you end up with floppy connectors? Well, some things still do use a floppy connection uh, to power them, um, like sound cards, and you get the cable that you'll need for connecting the um, Corsair link. So other things that we need to look at are the cables themselves. They're all black individual cables, but the, the, the bulk of them, um, like your PCI Express and your eight pins and stuff, do have the braid over the top of all of them. They're type four cables though, with the capacitors in, so cables from the um, RMIs and the RMXs and I think the SFXs as well, um, you can swap onto this. I think the SFXs don't have the caps though, I can't remember, but um, it's the type four cables anyway. So if you did want to get some uh, either Corsair individually braided like color coded cables, you can do, or you can also get um, uh, like aftermarket ones, you know, specially made. And But anyway, you get what I'm trying to say. Uh, all of the big ones do have the capacitors on. So all of these ones do have the capacitors on. I think that's why they've gone with the braid for over all of them. But then when you get to the SATAs, they're literally just the black cables. And you can see it's kind of plain, but it does um, uh, still look quite nice. Well, it's up to you. You get the SATAs, lots of SATAs, like I said, the Molexes as well. So that's your cables. So the good old sun moon. Now this thing does make an awful lot of noise when I first turn it on. So I'm just going to let it kind of kick in, the fans kick in and we can start. And yes, I know the screen is, this part is all gonna be going flashy, flashy, flashy at you. But again, it's just because of the fluctuation, um, like the hertz on the screen itself. But we're gonna to wanna to keep an eye on the wattage here. There will be a number here. This will be our efficiency. And then I'll zoom you in up to show you the, the oscilloscope. So on uh, level one, we've got 10%, which is 160 watt. On level two, we've got 320 watt, 800 watt, and then 1200 watts. So if I flick the machine on, I've preset it all up. One thing that I will say straight away, as you can see, the fan has kicked in and it does annoyingly do a 100% fan test. Once it has done that though, it um, goes into a semi-passive mode and only kicks in when it's required. It's one of the things that with the RMs, I was actually really happy that they, they stopped doing that. Uh, maybe where this one is bigger, it's like a self-test or something. I'd like to think in a firmware update, or maybe if they could do a firmware update on it, they could stop that or at least just make the fan spin and it not go to full RPM because it was something that with the original AXIs with the red label, I actually ended up hating it. Now, if um, I zoom you up here, the, the, the number that I recorded as being my worst number was uh, five millivolts, which is what um, I will be talking to you about today. Now, I've done the, five, I've done the 160 watt because this could be a relatively low end but when we look down here, we can see that we've got um, uh, 92, 93.2, um, 0.3% going on there. Now I can make this little switch 
and instantly we're up to almost 320 watts i do need to kind of up it a little bit to get exactly 320 but the result i took for this was 94.8 percent efficient at 320 watts and then up here the absolute highest ripple that i got on this was 6.2 millivolts so before i turn it on to 800 watts you can see that the fan's not spinning it's been running for about i don't know 10 15 minutes or something if we click 800 watts the fan instantly starts up we come back over what we can see though is the result that i took for my 50 percent was 94.6 although i did just see a 94.9 then uh, i had had the unit running for a while before so uh, you know a lot longer because i would made them warm up um, so i'm going to stick to my 94.6 as they were just very quick flashes but then when we move up here the result that I got, for, the worst result that I got for my millivolts was 9.2 millivolts at 800 watts. Back down here again, quick flick, just over 1200 watts. What you can see here with the efficiency is uh, the my recorded efficiency was 94.1 as the best. You can see we're getting two and three, but it is flickering around. And like I said, maybe it was because I'd been running it for longer before. Whenever I film these, I seem to see slightly lower and higher ones, but I've written them down. So they're the ones that you're going to see in the graphs in a minute. And then when we move up here for the millivolts, I saw a 7.8 millivolt as an absolute worst. Remember, Higher is worse than lower, so lower would be better. I'm giving you the worst case scenario. Now, when it does come to voltage stability, some people ask about this, some people don't really give a monkeys. All the 11.99s at 12.02, the 12.02s are 24 pin, all of the other ones are either the 8 pin EPS power supply, um, CPU cables, or the uh, PCI Express cables. So um, basically 11.99, 12.02, and then we can go to level two, so you know, that's 320. Click that one across, so that's 800. And then we click this one, and you can see that that is 1200 watts, and they barely moved. There was a very, very tiny uh, difference uh, in it at all, even to the point where you can flick the loads around from one extreme to the other, and you can see that it is very tight indeed. Apologies for the um, the fact it keeps refocusing, but it's where the uh, the lights are flickering as far as the camera is concerned. Okay then, so graph time and ripple test. This is sorted by 100%, and you can see that the AX1600i is at the top. The lower down the graph they go, it's slightly less, um, uh, they're not performing as well. One thing I will draw your attention to though is we did get a 9.2 at 50%. Now, 50% uh, would have been the point where I'd wanted that one to probably have been a bit better. Because if you look at the RM1000i below, yes, it's running um, uh, 30% less. But you can see you had 5.2 and 5.2 for the 20 and the 50. And then when you went up to 100, it was 9.2. Now. I don't know, with the newer ones, I would have expected a little bit less, but you did see in the video, we did see at 800 watts, we were seeing um, 9.2 come up quite regularly. Now, when you go up to the 100%, that's really when it starts, to, or 1200 watts, that's really when it started coming to its own and it plummeted down. So it does make me wonder if we did manage to push it up to 1600 watts, would it come down even more? I don't know possibly could do but you can see at 100% it did do very well very very well which is why it was at the top of the graph it was just a bit of a perplexing thing now I'm explaining this to you with my limited understanding I know a bit about power supplies I am not a Johnny Guru I don't pretend to be I'm just trying to explain to you the way I know now if you're a very technical power supply person this may be a little bit kind of under you know a bit too low end for your pre preference and that's absolutely fine but there are a lot of people out there that just like hardware like me that want to know a little bit about it and can grasp those things so i'm hoping i'm explaining to you, those of you out there that don't have a massive technical understanding and you'll actually know what i'm on about as well when we do move on to um, uh, power efficiency though, it did amazing. It's the most efficient power supply I've ever tested. 94.8% for 20% uh, and 94.1% for 100%. The closest behind that 
94.1 was uh, 93.3 before. So it's, yeah, it's done incredibly well. So that's definitely something for you to keep in mind. The, but with the ripple tests, to be honest with you, if it's, I mean, they were absolutely crackers results anyway. It's never, at that kind of level, it's never going to be something to particularly worry about. So people are going to be asking, why have we got, you know, a 1600 watt power supply? And I kind of, in, you know, said about that in the introduction. You can get components that want a lot more power now, but it's probably one out there for the miners. I explained to you about all the PCR Express connections that are on it and uh, possibly the really, really high-end overclockers. It does give you a lot of uh, performance. I mean, but if you've got yourself, I don't know, a mega SLI rig, uh, and you just want to be sat at that um, threshold where the fan's not gonna be cutting in, it's not gonna be getting hot, you've got a 10-year warranty, you know you've got the option to uh, change the cables if you want, I've actually got some on the shelf. So you can literally get yourself an upgrade pack of cables, bang them on there to match your rig, it does make life really simple and easy. And as I said as well, some people just want the absolute best that they can get, so they don't have to worry about it. So it's done very well, it's performed very well. The efficiency was absolutely bonkers. Something with that 50%, um, I, I'm, I think there might not be something, not necessarily that there's something wrong with it. Maybe I need to do something on the test or something, because something there's not sitting right with me. I'm probably gonna get a phone call from them and they'll be like, you should have done this. I'm hoping I've done it right though. So maybe it was me, I don't know. You saw it in the video. So at the end of the day, if you saw it in the video, you can see that I'm not being a total um, a silly boy. But that 50% was the only thing, the only thing, that I could really find fault with. And even then, it wasn't even necessary something that you can find fault with because the result was still really low. And it's not actually fair to compare um, two units at 50% that are totally different wattages because it's the wattage that you have to compare rather than the, um, uh, the actual percentage. And if you were to look at the RM uh, 1000i, I'll bring the graph back up for you just because it's, it's leapt into my head and it might be a better way to explain. The RM 1000i 100% was 9.2 millivolts. Uh, this was only doing it at um, uh, 800 millivolts. So, you know, I'm not sure, I don't know, but they, they were fairly close around those points. Maybe I've just made it sound worse, I don't know. Anyway, Trying to get all of this stuff done before I go to CES, because this has to be put live when I'm at CES. Maybe it's fried my brain a little bit. But anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thoughts about the fact that we've got a 1600 watt power supply now, but it's kind of cool. We've got new stuff going on in it and they've made it smaller. Um, and uh, what do you think about the move to gallium nitride? I think it's kind of cool. It's nice to see a bit of innovation in the industry at last. And innovation is the word, and that is why it's got the OC3D Innovation Award.